Bienvenidos y bienvenidas. Welcome. Uh, welcome to this second and final plenary and the final session of the Bioregional Regeneration Summit of 2022. I'm Ben Roberts coming to you from Pagasset Land, now known as Newtown, Connecticut. Y yo soy Melina Ángel, colombiana, y estoy en Costa Rica. Eh, y les damos la bienvenida también en nombre de Isabel Carslay, quien está en este momento en un viaje eh, yendo hacia la isla de Mallorca en, en Europa, quien hace parte también de nuestro equipo eh, de convención que ha convenido este este summit eh, en nombre de la, de la red de comunidades regenerativas. Bienvenidos. So, um, just to give you an idea of what we're doing during this session, we're going to start with some some thanks, some gratitude to all the people that helped to make this summit happen. Mm -hmm. um, Lena and I will talk a little bit about some highlights um, and takeaways. We'll we'll do a little exercise in the chat to share um, some some gratitude. We'll go into small groups for about 10 minutes. So again, if you missed my request earlier, if you want to be in a Spanish speaking group, put ES in front of your name. In an English speaking group, put EN. If you don't want to be in a group, put an asterisk in front of your name. Uh, and so then after our breakouts, we have two speakers. We're really excited to have Stuart Cowan, who was there at the birth of the Regenerative Communities Network, um, along with Eduardo, Edward Muller, who's also on the call. Um, uh, and then after Stuart, we'll hear from Uhuru Hilton, who's been an active participant in the, in the summit. Um, and, and then I'll talk a bit about what's next, where we go from here. And, uh, and then we're really delighted to have Tutu Manlele from Hawaii with us to um, offer a closing prayer and some and some words so with that um let's let's do some thanking Nina, thank you first of all for your fierce devotion to this network and, and without which we wouldn't be here doing this at all and and for your mm. call for collaboration radical radical collaboration that has energized us all <laughs> Thank you, Ben. And thank you too, because we, nosotros hicimos, perdón, una, una, un equipo maravilloso. Fue muy complementario. Teníamos visiones distintas de lugares distintos y eso hizo que pudiéramos tener una conversación entre nosotros regenerativa y entender cuáles eran las necesidades de la regeneración y, y pues poner esto juntos fue realmente un proceso de colaboración radical. Entonces también gracias por eso, Ben. Um, y you hubo muchos otros. Oh. ¿Qué pasó? We don't hear Andrés en el English channel. Yeah. Okay. ¿Lo repito? No. He's asking you to repeat. Sí, lo repito. Bueno, que estaba, estaba este, agradeciendo a Ben por haber realmente estado en un proceso de colaboración radical en, 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 en el diseño de este evento. Y, y gracias a, a Isabel y a Ben que desde lugares muy distintos, desde culturas distintas, desde idiomas distintos, desde maneras de ver el mundo distintos, eh, logramos entender a través de nuestro trabajo juntos cómo tenía que hacerse también este evento eh, como un fractal en el cual estamos todos dándole valor a la diversidad y a, y, a, y, a la, y a la colaboración radical. Entonces, pues por eso muchas gracias, Ben, también a ti. Um, sí. Yeah. And um, 
there were three other people that played a key role in this and in, in setting everything up for us and in making sure that you could all arrive here with as little difficulty as possible, um, starting with Lauren Minnis uh, of Regeneration Pollination and, and many other things who's been working feverishly in the background to upload all your profiles to the map and help people with, with getting their personal links to log in and, and uh, many other things, just kind of holding all those little details together that fall through the cracks if there isn't someone paying attention to them. And then Lucas Chaffee, who created the Kiko Chat platform, has been super helpful in making that platform work for us and having it be um, you know, functional and also beautiful. And in the same, uh, and, and, and Francois Nuquel also worked very much on the design of the platform and getting the colors right and the layout and having it having it work well. Um, uh, yeah, and, and then um, you want to thank our interpreters, Melina. <laughs> Sí, quiero, quiero agradecer a, a nuestros eh, traductores simultáneos que muy graciosamente también se, han, se, se, se adherieron a la cumbre. Ellos son Andrés Gutiérrez, Sofía Villa, Katia Rico y Erendira Velázquez. Muchas gracias por estar ahí para, para traducir, así como a María Fernanda Guerrero, quien hizo eh, mucho del diseño gráfico. Eh, para, para las medios y bueno. Y bueno, estuvieron también 62 personas, anfitriones, que sostuvieron eh, sesiones durante la cumbre, uh -huh. muchos de ellos por sí solos, y, eh, y pues fue un compartir profundo de muchas personas a quien estamos profundamente agradecidos. Eh, quienes compartieron y quienes asistieron porque pues no íbamos a estar solos aquí compartiendo así que un gran agradecimiento a todos a todos los asistentes and then most of all we want to thank you for showing up and being present giving us the gift of your time and your attention and your goodwill and your ideas and your blessings without without participation none of it means anything so uh, thank you all and so now we want to just offer some some brief highlights of the summit or kind of a little bit of a retrospective I'll, I'll start with some numbers and and I, these were as of eight o'clock last night so some of them might have changed so when I went to count how many people had registered we had 829 people that had registered in English and 169 in Spanish which comes to 998 people <laughs> <laughs> I think we're over a thousand by now I'm pretty sure I could check um but that feels significant <laughs> And um, and among them also were 187 different initiatives and groups and organizations that offered to be partners in the summit and help to spread the word about it um, and also to put themselves on the map publicly and to follow up if you say you want to connect with them. So we'll get to that towards the end of things. Um, but that's certainly a big part of this. You know, all of this is really at its heart about connecting. Um, I counted 120 sessions on our calendar over the two weeks mostly Zoom calls that we organized, a couple of in-person things, a few what we called field trips that were things organized by other groups that were aligned with us and so we cross-promoted them. Um, but uh, an enormous amount of effort. And, and as Melina said, most of those, you know, many of those hosted by, by those uh, 60 plus people. Um, we managed to record as of last night, 33 sessions were, were on our recordings. I think we may have up to 40 by now. Um, we had 43 um, bioregioning opportunities that were listed on, uh, on the co-digital platform that we use for a collective ideation problem 12, pro, uh, um, platform. Uh, 12 of those were in, in, in a Spanish iteration and 31 in English. And we'll be working with those going forward. Again, I'll, I'll say more the, about that at the end. Um, 764 people opted to put themselves onto the networking map and, eight, and, uh, and those 187 partners too. And um, most of those included detailed profiles uh, of themselves. And uh, what happened to Melina here? We can 
going to put them in. <laughs> there we go. Um, so there's quite a bit of information. A lot of, of care went into those profiles, and that's a huge resource we have to work with going forward. And there were 544 connections that were made between people or between people and, and partners uh, as of last night again, and 43 items on our resource list. So that's, but those are just numbers. I, I don't think they really capture the 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 essence of what we've been doing, which is, I, I think mm -hmm. in a way, creating the virtual equivalent of a bioregion or, or not creating it, but but sensing into it, right? The bioregion existed. If you want to say the field of bioregioning and uh, or of bioregional regeneration existed and we, we asked it, do you want us to do this summit? eight months ago, nine months ago, and it said yes. <laughs> and and so we've been in that field. We've been exploring it together and, and kind of trying to define and understand its dimensions and its edges and how it overlaps with other things. Um, and so that was really captured by all of these, these content-specific sessions that we had in particular, uh, all these amazing presentations, so much learning, so much that we can take in. My, my head got full about halfway through, uh, but we have the recordings and we know how to find each other. And we've also been then building this, like some soil in our own little area of this bioregion, amending it, composting it with our relationships, <laughs> with our connections, with our stories. And and now and, and planting seedlings. So now I think we're ready to move as we end this summit into a new phase that I'll talk about at the end. Something kind of like a village that's popping up in this bioregion. Um, and I think with that, I'll turn it over to Melina to mm -hmm. talk a little bit more about the, the content that that she's picked up on. Sí, gracias, Ben. Um, Quiero decir que eh, pasaron dos cosas que para mí son fundamentales en el proceso. Una fue que realmente estar en el modo de colaboración radical nos sacó de estar en una especie de mercado de nuestras habilidades. Y muchas de las personas que llegaron acá es porque han estado trabajando en esto, han estado trabajando en poner eh, emprendimientos, eh, consultoras, eh, estar tratando de conectar y trabajar en la regeneración y estar todos juntos en un lugar donde nos damos cuenta que otras personas hacen lo mismo que nosotros, que hemos llegado a hacer eh, a, a una emergencia, a darnos cuenta que hacemos parte de esta emergencia en la humanidad, de hablar de lo mismo, de estar conectados, eh, tratando de armonizar muchos de los temas que se han estado dando durante toda la cumbre, es un espacio muy bonito porque nos deja estar a un nivel humano, a un nivel de conexión profunda y es muy importante reconocer que podemos estar eh, eh, no solamente tratando de vendernos, que es mucho a lo que nos han, entrenado, nos han formado para hacer eso, eh, y más bien estar en un espacio de, de profunda conexión con la tierra y con este propósito de regeneración bioregional. Eh, y lo segundo que quiero más enfatizar es que la bioregionalización es uno de los espacios más profundamente anclados en todo lo que se compartió y de lo que la gente está sacando de esto es la necesidad profunda de sentir que tenemos que bioregionalizarnos, que tenemos que mirar hacia adentro, hacia la esencia de nuestros territorios, de nuestros paisajes, de nuestras comunidades y de nosotros mismos y de cómo esa conexión es la conexión con la naturaleza, es la conexión con nuestra madre, es la conexión con nuestra esencia y que podemos ser quienes somos en nuestras conexiones, en nuestras relaciones, en el territorio, por el territorio regenerando, regenerándonos allí, regenerando las relaciones allí. Eh, y esto ha llevado, digamos que muchas de las conversaciones se fueron hacia cómo esas conexiones eran tan vitales que incluso son más vitales que los, mismas, eh, los mismos cómo hacer las cosas. 
¿no? Eh, porque cómo hacer las cosas, lo que nos dimos cuenta en la cumbre es que emergen patrones, son patrones que nos ayudan a entender cómo hacer bioregionalización, cómo regenerar las bioregiones, pero que cada vez que los queremos aplicar tienen que volverse, sintonizarse con el, cada uno de los territorios. No es una fórmula, es una experiencia de conexión con los territorios. Y en eso estuvimos de acuerdo casi en todas las, eh, las sesiones. Eh, y dentro de esa conexión, ese camino de conexión que, que se forma allí, hay una necesidad también de ver eh, eh, y de trabajar los territorios internos y externos desde la realidad que son, es decir, también viendo los traumas que hay. Hay traumas de las comunidades, toda la tierra tiene, tiene eh, muertos violentos, toda la tierra tiene des desalojos, tiene invasiones, tiene de extractivismo, tiene deforestación tiene polución, contaminación. Entonces, eh, entender que ese proceso de ir hacia adentro no solamente es de sanarnos a nosotros mismos como personas, sino es también sanar esos traumas territori territoriales. Eh, porque en esa conexión es donde se encuentra la vida. La vida es la vida de uno, nuestra vida, y nuestra vida común, y nuestra vida... Eh, donde se puede nombrar a la naturaleza como el sujeto, la vida es el sujeto, somos el sujeto y en esa armonización con la tierra, con las bioregiones, podemos encontrar un nivel de conversación que es humano, que es hablar entre humanos, así sean poderes económicos, así sean poderes políticos, así sean comunidades, eh, así sean nuestros vecinos, es traer la, la humanidad a nuestra bioregionalización es parte de lo que se conversó acá. Y lo otro y último que quiero nombrar es que en, este, en esta versión de cómo eh, las bioregiones en todo el mundo se pueden juntar para hacer un movimiento, un movimiento de bioregionalización, Muchas personas y muchos han estado hablando de esto desde hace 40 años o más, pero llegar a este momento en el que todos estamos vibrando con esta misma eh, eh, resonancia, esta misma frecuencia del a dónde tenemos que estar, cuál es la escala a la que tenemos que regenerar, pues nos hace sentirnos y vernos como un movimiento y en ese sentido el pedido que queremos hacer para, las, eh, para, para, para los flujos de, de financiación, los flujos de recursos que ayuden a hacer esta regeneración, es que financien un movimiento, no financien solamente un proyecto, sino que se sientan parte del proceso en donde la economía no es un cuerpo, el cuerpo es la bioregión, la economía es un flujo, de recursos que atraviesa bioregiones y que si todos estamos colectivamente unidos en ese flujo, logramos tener una regeneración económica real. Entonces, eh, esa es la invitación a que podamos vernos y sentirnos eh, como un movimiento. Eh, entonces, este es el resumen más general que yo puedo dar. Por supuesto que se comp compartieron muchísimas herramientas sobre el impacto, sobre eh, cómo hacer conversaciones con gobiernos locales, sobre eh, herramientas para eh, trabajar con las comunidades, sobre eh, cómo empezar a hacer ciencia local, ciencia ciudadana, para conectar a la ciudadanía con los territorios. Y en, es, en, y en todas estas maneras de acercarse, también hay diferencias entre, los, entre las bioregiones, pero hay patrones generales las, los cuales podemos emular y aplicar en nuestras bioregiones. Eh, en este proceso que hemos comenzado acá de colaborar 
bioregionalmente de forma radical y entre bioregiones. Entonces se ha dado una, un intercambio entre bioregiones, un intercambio entre redes que trabajan bioregionalmente eh, y entre personas basándonos en esta amistad profunda y en esta conectividad que tenemos acá. Entonces quiero eh, pasarle la palabra a Ben, que nos invite a, 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 a que, que nombremos esto que cada uno también ha, ha, ha encontrado en, en, en la cumbre. Ben. Thank you so much, Melina. Just want to sit with those words. The seriousness of this business. I'm going to invite you to write something into the chat if you, if you feel like it, if you're so moved. Our question is, what is one specific thing related to the summit that you are grateful for? And just... Take your time to write that and, and drop it in and read what other people have. I'm going to play a song, and so I'm going to ask that we pause the recordings again so when we upload this to YouTube, we don't have to edit it again. Um, and, uh, yeah, let's just do that. And, and, you know, it can be a short thing, but but you could also take your time to maybe talk about some specific moment, really, that, that was particular to you um, that you want to name, as well as more general things. Yeah. Tams, almost like did it the whole time. Then, uh, uh, yeah. Local time here, almost four. So, Melina, over to you to introduce our first speaker. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay, so we have to reset you. our translation, right? Um, oh, 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 oh. well, we should do it. You want to tell people or just you have to go back to translation maybe and select the channel again that you want for interpretation. I'm set on. Ah, the bueno, one. si 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 están en español, si han escogido el canal de español para para escuchar, vuélvanlo a escoger porque muy seguramente se les eh, pues se puede modificar cuando volvemos de los grupos. Um, entonces voy a estar hablando en español. Y quiero introducir a, a nuestro querido amigo Stuart Cowan, quien viene de los bosques templados, de las zonas costeras, de los territorios tradicionales Cuacahuac, del norte de Norteamérica, en la costa pacífica. Stuart eh, recibió un doctorado en sistemas complejos en la Universidad de Berkeley y es coautor de Diseño Ecológico, una visión de sistemas complejos de integración de cultura, edificios, paisajes y metabolismo material. Ha trabajado en regeneración bioregional durante 25 años con EcoTrust, Portland Family of Funds, Capital Institute y su empresa Autopoyesis. Fue el arquitecto y coordinador fundador de la Red de Comunidades Regenerativas entre el 2018 y el 2020 y se ha desempeñado como asesor de Common Earth, Costa Rica Regenerativa, Regenerative Earth y 100 Landscapes for One Billion People. Queremos darte la bienvenida, Stuart, para que nos acompañes en esta plenaria. Thank you, Melina. I am speaking to you today from unceded Ohlone territory in the San Francisco Bay Area. I want to express my great gratitude to Melina, Isabel, and Ben, and so many others that organized this wonderful summit. Uh, gives me a lot of hope. And my gratitude for all of you participating today, everyone that's joined the summit. I want to share a poem from Thomas Berry, who called himself a geologian. So he was uh, an earth scale, geological scale theologian. 
And he wrote a beautiful book called The Dream of the Earth. And he wrote this about his home place, the Hudson Valley. Tell me a story, a story that will be my story, as well as the story of everyone and everything about me. The story that brings us together in a valley community, a story that brings together the human community with every living being in the valley, a story that brings us together under the arc of the great blue sky in the day and the starry heavens at night, a story that will drench us with rain and dry us out in the wind, a story told by humans to one another that will also be the story that the wood thrush sings in the thicket, the story that the river recites in its downward journey, the story that Storm King Mountain images forth in the fullness of its grandeur. So what's next? Tell me a story of your bioregion, your mountains and rivers without end, your oceans, your forests, the winged creatures, the soil, the light at dawn and dusk. Tell me a story of how you're connected by grace to the people and the more than human beings of your home place. Tell me a story of life flourishing, of atmospheric carbon levels drawing back down, of the planet's fever finally breaking. Mm. Tell me a story of healing from our individual and collective trauma carried for generations, finally released. Tell me a story of finding joy in this great work of bioregioning with those you never expected, farmers and hydrologists, accountants and philosophers, firefighters and ecologists, poets and ranchers, all ignited and linked by the indigenous voice. Tell me a story of rippling change from your valleys to neighboring valleys, up and down great mountain ranges, from the great elevations down to the coral reefs regenerating. Follow the water, follow the living veins of the planet, follow the great work of being a good ancestor to those generations to follow. I wish you joy and abundance in this work. May it sustain you and your families. You're not alone. You're held by the 14 billion year being we call the universe, part of one great story shared with star, with stone, with salamander, and with salmon. Find a thread, pick it up, and connect with the other summit participants, with projects, with networks, with watersheds, and then connect that thread back to your heart, your five senses, and your seven chakras. <laughs> Thank you for all that you are and all that you give. You are on mute, man. Thank you so much, Stuart. You know, for those words, for for the work that you did to to bring this network to a certain point that allowed it to continue after you and and go through the journeys it's gone through to get to this to this stage. Um, and uh, I look forward to our continued connecting and your continued intertwinglement with what we're up to here. <laughs> Yes, I like that. Intertwinglement, me too. <laughs> so now I'm really delighted to um, introduce Uhuru Hilton, our second speaker in this plenary. Uhuru Hilton is an anti-racist systems advisor, regeneration capacity builder, and forest steward based in her ancestral lands in the territory of the Okanichi Band of the Saponi Nation. And she supports regeneration practitioners in decolonizing bioregional regeneration networks. That's something I think she's committing perhaps to, to do going forward as well. Um, and I was just, I've been so delighted to meet Uhuru over the course of this summit. We did not know each other beforehand. But it turns out we knew a lot of the same people, so our initial connection was was that delightful version of the name game, and 
and and feeling an immediate sense of oh yeah we 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 know where we're each coming from and there was some trust there um and there were many memorable moments after that when when we continued to cross paths during the summit and one in particular when she talked about the concept for her of a pod and of the the notion of choosing the people to whom you'll be accountable and and engaging with the rest of the world in in a generative way but in a very different way from from the way she engages with those people and it really spoke to me there was a clarity to it um that really i feel is is informing where we're going next um which again i'll say more about in a bit but um i just you know from the moment that i was in Hoover's presence i felt this aliveness i felt this reality i, I felt this groundedness and and a, and a sense of of um just sort of carrying all the the complexity and the weight of what we're going through um and i think you'll hear that in what she has to say so i'm going to just stop talking and bring her over here welcome uhuru thank you thank you this. thank you ben and um thank you so much everyone who has been sharing this experience and holding this field together um i am full full and um i want to um I want to share that fullness and I want us to um, be in a practice of sharing our um, sharing, sharing with each other of a, I call it a decolonial decolonizing practice because at the ground of it, it's empathy. And, you know, at the very center of it, that's what it is. It's empathy. And what is the most that is the most anti-colonial thing I can think of is empathy. So what is what do we need to have empathy? Um, and feel free to put things in the chat and um, check me for time. But you know, I, I think we can all bring something to um, a practice of empathy, especially after my experience. Um, I'm going to share some practices from my pod. Okay, um, and we're gonna do something together and I ask for your grace in participating um, at, as you're able. I'm not going to ask anybody to do more than what we have. But the first thing I want to do um, before we get into that is um, really for us to take a moment to breathe. So if you can just feel where you are, feel, where you meet the land, where you meet, where that land is touching that mycelium, just feel into it and breathe. Breathe into our edges, feeling, sensing. Not changing, just noticing. Noticing our edges. We're gonna do a little bit of a practice that I've learned from the people in this, people that I've developed with the people in this room that I've learned from um, the people who've helped me feel my edges. Because for me, learning is, is really about the edges. Um, we'll do three things in 15 minutes or less, and we're gonna chart our learning. We're going to do some empathetic practice and um, hopefully we'll um, oh, through, be gracious and have thanks throughout. Um, Take all the time you need. This diagram, was a game changer, okay? This diagram changed my life and it was introduced to me by a person named Jody Lassiter at the North Carolina um, uh, Climate Environmental Justice Summit. And uh, this was, it helped me understand what I was feeling in these experience of where 
I have so much excitement. I'm getting so much knowledge and I'm also uncomfortable. And so um, this is a way of explaining and maybe you've seen it before, what is happening when we're learning. At the center, there's comfort. Um, but within comfort, there's not a lot of learning happening uh, for, for us as spe species. There's not, there's, there's um, especially as we get older, right? As we get set in our ways. Um, but then as we're learning in this, according to this diagram, there has to be this experience of stretch. So I'm gonna turn this off for a moment and just give everyone, if you're able, a moment to just stretch now because we've been doing a lot in front of our cameras. Maybe look behind you, um, look to the side. Ah, it might feel good, right? That might be a good stretch. But if if some of us did like a back bend, right? Or we went, we did some kind of stretch we're not used to doing, it would not feel good. It would actually be uncomfortable. It would hurt. And um and we might feel moments of panic. We might feel moments, moments of withdrawal. Um, everything on this diagram is actually important, is needed, right? We need that comfort to connect with each other. Um, we need that stretch to feel that release, that ease, right? Thank you. And then also there's that panic. There's the fear, there's the edges. So right now I wanna ask a question and see where, where did we have comfort? Where did people experience learning? And where did we experience the edges? Where did we experience some panic in this last two weeks that we had together? So just, we're gonna take a couple of minutes just to reflect. And if you want to um, add something in the chat, um, we'll take a, a few moments of silence and, um, and then we can unmute if you have something to say. Just put a one in the chat if you need more time. Okay, it's story time. Would anyone like to share their moments of learning, their moments of stretch? Melina, I see you dropped something in the chat. Do you like to come off mute and share? Okay. Eh, estuve tensa con un participante que constantemente estuvo eh, tratando de llamar la atención hacia sus propias soluciones. Y siempre como confrontadamente, como no, no colaborando realmente. Y fue todo un proceso para poder sostenerlo, sostenerlo a él, sostener el espacio y sostenernos a nosotros en el, en el proceso. What do we have another of, of stretch or, or maybe comfort? 
Where did we experience comfort? I, I had a moment of comfort. It was one time we um, towards the end of a session with uh, Malina that there was a spiritual sink. It was quite a beautiful time. Um, I appreciate that, that, that a lot. Megan. Yeah, I noticed I was very comfortable uh, taking in presentations and I actually learned a lot. Um, it was a good, but it's just a very comfortable place to be that kind of that intake and listening. Thank you, comfort and stretch. Right. You know, it's, it's great to notice that, you know, and um, and to take care of ourselves. And I want to pause here just to give some gratitude for Milena and Ben and um, so many others that, um, who have been holding this field of care around stretch that I've noticed um, in my experience. And I just want to make a, a note about when the individual is stretched, you know, it's not like this... Uh, we're in this vacuum where this individual is stretched, but there's also some, you know, there are also all these systems that are being stretched, you know? So what's happened to me in this experience is some systems are stretching, some systems are changing. What about you? Has anyone experienced some, or noticed, or even imagining the stretch that's happening in the systems you are a part of? And take a moment to just reflect and then we can um, share a little bit. Story time. Natalia, I see your hand is up. Yes, thank you. Um, I think one of the things that I've noticed is that um, uh, as being white, there's this um, energy of dominance inside my body that is often reflected in um, you know, how quickly I respond to an answer or um, how uh, being the first to, to, to be in a space or have a solution like somebody mentioned. Um, and I'm just noticing that uh, as folks are doing their work, as I'm doing the, my work, and um, not necessarily um, trying to bottle it down or, or try to uh, control this, this dominant energy, but really figuring out how to dismantle it and, and, and even love it for, for what it did and mm -hmm. release it for what it's no longer useful for. Um, I'm just noticing how that release um, into uh, being able to share space with people is um, is manifesting and stretching and expanding systems around me that is giving way of so much energy and life to arise as I'm leaning into stillness and listening um, and uh, yeah and not dominating myself but but again um, dismantling and working and releasing um, so others can can we can be together yeah <laughs> yes yeah. yes and I see um there's activity in the chat. Ben, did you want to share about the, the note that you placed in the chat? Sure. Yeah, and one particular, so I put in there, you know, networks starting to collaborate with, with one another. And, and so there's this stretch in this idea of radical collaboration. I think that that, that was kind of what Melina was calling us to do was to stretch ourselves because we know collaboration is hard and, and yet we times are calling for us to do it. And, and 
between networks is a particularly difficult thing because it's hard enough for networks to to work within their own fuzzy boundaries, let alone try to figure out how to you know cross pollinate. There's one particular network that really showed up beautifully in this summit, and that's Earth Regenerators. Um, so many people from that network, uh, including a number that are that are here on this call, as well as Joe Brewer um, with his with his uh, conversation, and and it just the sense that we could dance and play together and support one another um, was really palpable to me, and I, and I also sense possibilities for many more networks to do that in a in a dance together going forward. Um, Global Regeneration Collab and Regeneration Pollination was another where that just happened today, actually, a really fun kind of flow from their space into, into this space um, uh, with the session before this with the Tulum folks and then, and now this. So uh, it's, uh, it's a stretch and it's exciting. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes, more, more, any more um, noticings about what's shifting things the, how the stretch is impacting the systems you're a part of. You're in, you're in as an individual, your individual system, your families, your networks. How is this, how is that impacting you? I'll share actually, because um, I had a very amazing experience um, of impact for my systems. Um, Yeah, um, I really thought that I was already stretched, you know, <laughs> how, how much more can I stretch? How much more can a Black woman stretch? Um, <laughs> but I did find I had more, more places to grow as an individual. And this place where I had grief and hurt and righteous anger okay um has found transformation in really multiple experiences that i had over the, the summit um but one way that it manifested was that me an unrecognized um descendant of the Okanichi band of the Saponi, an unrecognized um, Native American person, um, a Black Native American person, I, who um, found myself not really needing my sadness and my anger to be held. Um, I found myself having space to hold my grief and honor my grief and reach out to offer help to the nation and just say, hey, what do we need? What, do, what does the nation need to develop um, bioregional regeneration actors and activities? What does the nation need to, to, to care and tend our land? We, and this was a moment of great healing for me. And uh, I'm so grateful. Yes, metamorphosis. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I had another moment of stretch about, you know, I'm someone who lives two hours away from my child because of displaced, because of being displaced by development. And, um, that hurts. And, um, I got to play the role of corporate, a corporate role in the summit, um, in the, uh, constellations. Um, experience. I got to play the role of hotel and restaurants. And it was so painful to play this role. At the same time, um, 
I also realized I got to see another part of it. I realized, hey, these these are they're part of the ecosystem. These are these are these are mushrooms like me. They're connected to the mycelium. They're getting excited about potential. They're getting excited about. And so I got to see opportunity that, and so that's, so my, my conversations are shifting with government, with um, government entities, with, um, with business. I'm still decolonizing and I'm realizing that's something that I'm realizing that I can extend empathy. I'm realizing that my empathy for nature can actually help me have empathy for um, all of my siblings. Would anyone else, Day, would you like to share? I see you have placed some things in the chat. Thank you, Huru. Um, I wasn't <laughs> I wasn't putting a bunch in there to get attention. I just uh, it, it doesn't let you shift and return. So my three things ended up as three separate comments. But thank you. Um, no, I mean I feel like I said what I had to say in there. I would just be repeating what I already wrote. Um, the baseline is just a sense of being uh, of a sense of belonging. Uh, it's beyond comfort. It's it's almost like a like a homecoming. There's some sadness connected with it because only a few are actually in my immediate vicinity where I might meet you IRL, as they say, walk around the lake with you and share food or tea or something. Uh, but I definitely want to do that with the ones that are. So there's some sadness actually with feeling connected with people around the world. Um, but, uh, but maybe that's kind of bittersweet. Um, uh, and I won't elaborate on the other things I said there, they're there, um, it's a, a part of it. I guess I will just say that when the prompt was first given, uh, my second comment about the stretch, uh, actually, I think interestingly corresponds. It's a reciprocal to what Melina first mentioned, actually, about sp space taking. And as someone else uh, was speaking to to that, it might have been Megan. Um, that balance of space creation and space taking, to what degree you're like showing up, and to what degree you're able to listen and and receive. Um, and that's, that is absolutely a dance, a beautiful dance. I deeply appreciate everyone here for that. Thank you. I'm, we're going to be going to the next part. Um, and I'll just leave you with, um, the, you know, this image of the tree and, um, because maybe many of us have trees near us and maybe it doesn't look like this, um, but there might be some sort of tree where you are um, that you can we can all connect with and knowing what we know about how trees are communicating with each other and through the mycelium and how um, how they actually are knowing our footsteps how they recognize us um, I'll be thinking when I visit the white oak um, that is the the most elder tree that I'm connected to on the land. Um, I'll be thinking about you all and my connections to you. Thank you so much, Ahuru. Hmm. This is real life too, Day. Yes, thank you. Yeah, and the grief is important. So.
important to hold space for that. So I'm gonna talk about what's next. Do a little screen sharing. We'll go back to that. So the summit is ending and I don't know if we thank Jane Brady for the beautiful graphics, the, the evocation of mycelium and radical connection and collaboration that she created for us, along with the beautiful logo for the Regenerative Communities Network that was not her work. That was from a friend of Melina's in Colombia, whose name I realize I don't know, but um, I feel like this helped to hold us in the space. These images create a field. So the summit is ending. We're going to close it when this is done and we're running a little over time. So I apologize to those of you who have to go at the bottom of the hour, but we're just going to take the time we need. Um, we're not going to do a hangout. We're not going to have a party. We're not going to dance. We did that this morning. Um, but what are we going to do? What's next in this serious work? No. And the, the fizziness of this community and this energy and all, all of this starts to, to settle. We want to stay in celebration and appreciation for a while. Whatever else happens, we've done something together and it's worth celebrating and it's worth appreciating. And I think in my experience, I know I don't always do enough of that. And so I really want to encourage us over the next week, really, to when you think about this experience to, to go there. And then we're going to do it again in six months. We got a clear signal among ourselves as a hosting team we want a bigger group that will be pulling together but it, but it's clear that that the energy that we felt here we want to we want to rekindle it so we look forward to seeing you and many others and in the meantime day day said there's already a community practice here i noticed in the chat i maybe that's true i i feel like we're we're starting to build one because that's that's slower work that requires you know not just the busyness but really showing up and being accountable to each other um a little bit like you know i spoke of maybe we were exploring this this virtual version of a bioregion around this these these ideas of bioregional regeneration and now the community practice is like a village we're going to stand up inside of that bioregion to tend the soil that we've been working on and we have tools for this. We have the networking map, and there's much more to do with that map. We've just gotten started with it. Um, and when you go to the map, and there's links I'll give you at the end for that, um, there's a way that you can get your link back to add your data. That's right there in the adding to the map section. And there's two videos about how to use the map. So I'm not going to talk about that. But there's some things I want to invite you to do. One is to add more to your profile. Um, some of you may have completed the profile and the registration, others may not, but we added more questions, like what languages do you speak? So that over the next six months, you can meet and speak the language that you most want to speak with others. Or what gifts are you bringing? What conversations do you wanna have? A number of different things. And then there's sharing appreciations. We can do that through the map by going into the, the some app interface. And, and again, it's explained in the in the sidebar of the map there. And, and finding people that you had a connection with and, and telling a little story about that. Um, and then you can go to the map and click on yourself and see, see what those stories are that others might have told. And you can continue to make personal invitations and add connections to partners that you already have connections to. So we get a clear picture of those connections, but also invitations to those partners or requests to them to explore collaborating, for example, to learn more about what they're doing. And the partners have committed to looking at this information and responding if you, if you do this. And then we have a new phase with the map. We're calling opportunity explorations. These are gonna be some green diamonds to go with the orange circles that are people and the blue squares that are partners. And a lot of you participated in this ideation process on the co-digital platform. And we got this list of 43 different ideas, some in Spanish, some in English, but we don't know who they came from. And we don't know which ones we all wanna cluster around. And the ones that rose to the top, maybe are the ones that we wanna, that a lot of us wanna do together, but the ones that didn't are still things that some of you really cared about. And maybe there's only one or two people 
that you need to find that are going to care about that. Or maybe because we're connected to everything else and you want 30 people, they just weren't here, but we'll find them. So we want those to, to go onto the map as well. And there's a special form for that. And then to help it all to really come together, uh, we've got people volunteering to be weavers so that you're not just on your own in drawing all these connections or navigating the complexity of this technology. Um, and we really wanna activate that third dimension of our vision of how this summit would happen, that we'd have all these Zoom calls that were open calls and everybody who wanted to could show up and they're on the calendar. And we'd have these online tools that we would use. And we did a, we did a lot of both of those. But this third dimension that we would self-organize into small groups with the right people at the convenient or the right time with the right context for what we care about and really start to make the connections and do the work we want to do. And it turns out maybe that needs to happen in a little bit more stretched out and spacious time. So that's coming up for those of you that want to do it. And we still have this platform, Kiko Chat, that we've been using. Um, it's got the recordings on it. We're going to be moving them to a YouTube channel at some point, but they'll be up there for, um, for another 20 or 14 days. They, they last 30 days so from whenever they were recorded. So we have at least two weeks of them. We have the resource list, which you can still add to. We have a discussion board, which some people started to use. And when you post to that, an email goes out the next day saying, here's a new topic and here's a link to it. So we can really actually use this. It's a, it's a nice tool, as is the weekly collaborative newsletter, which comes out on Mondays. And anything you submit by Sunday morning, you get one item per week that can go into that. So we have these really nifty tools for staying connected and building the community practice. And we do need money. We're not expecting everybody to give money. Some people need to receive money for the work that they've done. Or uh, in my vision of things, you get money just for showing up if uh, if that's something that, that you need. But um, we want to be bold about this, not just to provide some financial gifts to those who've gotten us through to this point, but actually to, to get a starter pool of money to take us into the next steps as well. So we're going to be making a fairly bold ask. And many of you said you wanted to, um, you were willing to consider making an offer, but you wanted to wait until after you participated. So we will be reaching out to you. Um, and then we're not we're not done with the Zoom calls, with the open Zoom calls, but we're really going to focus on, on this set of processes, the things where you're engaging peer-to-peer, -peer, where we really can roll up our sleeves and, and, and explore radical collaboration. We've learned a lot. We've connected at a certain fizzy level, but now these processes are ways that we can really connect more deeply around what matters most to us, um, get serious, be accountable, um, be vulnerable. And um, not that we haven't been doing that for the past two weeks, but but this is a slower pace and um, uh, and maybe a little different context as we kind of move inward into this this village building um, process. And uh, and we want your feedback. We want your input. So we do have a little survey that we're asking you to complete as well uh, about that. And so we've got all these links and I'll put a, I'll drop a slide in here with the, with those. Um, I think that covers pretty much everything, but you can always get in touch with us if there's more. Um, and I'll just close with one more metaphor um, that Uhuru reminded me of that goes back to what's behind me in this art. And, you know, this, at its most basic level, we've just been here to, to, to make, to, to help make this mycelial mat of connection, of human connection, more more dense and, and more rich. And I think we've, we've clearly done that and we're gonna keep on doing that. And when the conditions are right, right? When the conditions are right, mushrooms can emerge. And so we think over the next six months and into the next summit, we're gonna produce some mushrooms, a lot of different mushrooms. We think the soil's ready. We think there's enough moisture. We think the trees are ready to dance with us in the sense of these other organizations and initiatives that we're connected into. And so um, I look forward to seeing what that is and what those mushrooms can do um, and uh, to continuing the journey with all of you. So with that, I'm going to turn things over to well, I think, are you going to introduce Manolele? Uh, yes. Melina? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I have the great honor. Tengo el honor increíble de, de presentar um, a Manuel Duduat, <laughs> quien 
es una abuela hawaiana eh, y nos acompaña hoy, nos honra con su presencia. Ella ha viajado mucho como cantante profesional, ¿no? En, en Norteamérica, en Canadá, en Europa. Y siempre ha traído esos conocimientos ancestrales de conocimiento y de espiritualidad con, con, a través de sus cantos. Su trabajo como social involucrado con su comunidad ha tenido... Eh, ha estado muy vinculado con la prevención del suicidio en adolescentes en Hawái. Y, y esa sensibilidad social, esa sensibilidad con las personas, uh, la ha llevado a ser parte de, las, de los 29 ancianos globales de la Delegación de la Madre tiena, Tierra de las Naciones Unidas Originales. Los ancianos trabajan de acuerdo con protocolos y lineamientos ancestrales defendiendo los derechos de la madre tierra y las leyes de la naturaleza. En Hawái, la Iana, la tierra, es vida. Y Manulene representa las tierras y los pueblos del mundo como uno solo. Queremos invitar, invitarte, Manulele, a que compartas tu palabra y nos ayudes a cerrar esta cumbre para que esté completa y contenida, para que todos tengamos otro lugar hacia donde ir después. Muchas gracias por estar con nosotros. No, tienes eso. <risa> Mahalo, Anui Loa Melina. Where is Andres for the translation? But I felt your words in my heart that did not need any. So Mahalo, which means thank you. Um, I, you know, Day, you're you're amazing. Everyone that is sitting here today, I have to commend and applaud you for being such big-hearted people, amazing listeners, and wise responders it's it's so it's so impressive to me i'm so grateful to be standing and included here with you mahalo so much so aloha mai kako from which means greetings from all of us to all of you from here on kauai the garden island of hawaii recognized by many global leaders as the birthing center of the world. Aloha. Alo means to be in the presence of creator. Ha means to share the breath that he gave to us. So that when you meet someone, you're not saying, hi, goodbye, I love you. You're saying, please, I invite you into my personal space to commune together in the breath that was given to us. So aloha. Also, I'd like to recognize and let you know that my brothers and sisters, elders from around the world, are with us in this very moment, in this very circle. It is with great joy and admiration to you to, you, to join you individually and collectively at the Bioregional Regeneration Summit. Mahalo. May the work that you have accomplished together be the seeds of change that sprout and flourish for our global sacred lands, our cultures, and our economies. I would like to begin. Have any of you been to Hawaii before? Have you been to Hawaii? No, no, okay. Well, I am going to, I'm going to pray that we can all come together here and exchange ha and aloha to each other. I'd like to begin with a traditional Hawaiian prayer and blessing for all beings. This is a very special prayer. But in Hawaii, uh, pre-Christian contact, the form of 
prayer or pule because we're a, a, we're a, we're a verbal, an oral culture, is in the form of chant or what oli. So I would like to do a chat for you entitled the Eho Mai chat. Eho, to please bring down Mai towards us. In this chat, we are addressing your ancestors, your personal ancestors that are behind you, follow, watch over, protect, and guide you in every moment. And we're asking to Eho Mai come onto us to share with us, to gift us with their ike, their wisdom, their knowledge, their discernment, to bring it down to us, share it with us, so that we can perform and dance together in excellence and perfection. So we're gonna hula, hula, hula. We invite them into our space and we say mahalo uh, uh, to our ancestors who are there for us. If you've never heard um, a Hawaiian chant, please do not be alarmed because it's meant to be loud. I'm actually announcing to everyone in the area that a sacred moment is taking place and we will be joined together in spirit. So if you, you can imagine all 33 of us here in a circle and join in hands with all of your registered participants, as well as the spiritual family and warriors that have been invited into this pule or prayer. So if you can imagine us in a large circle, our right hand down and our left hand up, and we hold that way. Electricity, energy, when photographed or recorded, Sorry, I better turn that off. How do I turn? Open the window and throw this out. That's how I turn it off. So let me see. Energy, when photographed, is like a wave. You know that, you scientists there, you know that energy is like this. Well, when we are in a circle and our hands are down, our right hand is down and our left hand is up and we're holding hands, we are extending that flow of peaceful and proper energetic movement. So we are joined with universe. So if you can imagine in your minds, all of us here that are connected on this video are joining hands, many, many prayer warriors, healers, shamans, tribal leaders, elders. They are with us this very second to give pule, to give prayer for your movement forward. So the Ialamai, the Ehomai chant goes like this. Let's breathe deeply together, please, in through your nostrils. Exhale with your mouths open. Inhale through your nostrils deeply. Fill your lungs, your diaphragm. Exhale with your mouths open. And once again, please. Eho my kaiki my luna my Ona me aula no ea, ona me e. Eho mai, eho mai, eho mai kaike, eho mai kaike mai luna mai e. Ona me aula no ea. Ona mele e e ho mai e ho mai e ho mai kai ke e ho mai kai ke mai na mai e o na me o na no e a o na mele e 
Mahalo Nakuna. Mahalo to my two brothers that are on this call. Ke Allah. Ke Kalamai. Ke Allah. I got lost in my mind. <laughs> I have two um, two brothers on this call. Ke Allah and. Uh, okay, I'm a young and uh, well, I, I I I lose you for now, my my uh, brother in blood, my brothers in blood, where we the rest of us are connected in spirit, brothers and sisters. So mahalo so much. I'd like to offer a prayer for us. You asked the question, um, Ben, what to do next? And you also said in six months to rekindle the flame that you started on this summit. But may I suggest that the answers that we all need are already on the way. That this summit and each and every one of you as who have responded to the kahea, who have responded to the needs of our planet, our people, from the skies to deep in the ground. You have responded and you have been heard. Your song has been recorded in the divine presence of creator and he is going to be leading our way with his light, with his wisdom. So the questions for us really, in my opinion, um, no problem. We don't have to ask. It's already been answered and it's on the way. All we have to do is just surrender and follow the light to enjoy the journey, to continue our personal healing so that we can serve properly like um, like my my new friend um, William uh, points out so eloquently in his messages to diffuse the trauma of DNA cellular historical ancestral trauma uh, it's no big deal it's no big deal for the creator that can be corrected. Like that, you can be filled with the unconditional love, the joy, uh, the, the laughter, the lightness, the knowledge of correction and healing. So, no worry, everybody, no worry. Everything going to be okay. That's what our Kapuna would say to me as a child. Our Kapuna would always say that, yeah, Ipo? When we would go to them with our problems as teenagers and adults, they are in Hawaiian culture, um, unlike the Western culture, our kupuna, our elders, they don't offer, okay, you need to do this, 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 then this, and this. This is what you gotta do. 
Aole, that doesn't happen in our culture. What happens is our kupuna, with their beautiful smiling eyes and their soft, lyrically beautiful voices would look at us and say, no worry, baby, everything going to be okay. Because they know that we all learn at different levels, at different times, in different ways. And it's up to us to make the choices. So they gave us that permission, yeah, Ipo? They gave us that power to know that, no worry, baby, everything going to be okay. So I pat you on the shoulder and I say the same to you as a kupuna in Hawaii. No worry, brothers and sisters, everything going to be okay. So as we listen and we watch for the ho'ailona, the signs from heaven, the divine signs from our creator, I pray that you are blessed from this forward on, this moment on, into your lives over the next few months, and to be aware and to be looking for the ho'ailona, the signs that are going to confirm to you personally the touch that God has given to you, the blessing that he's saying, good for you, sister, good for you, brother, I go bless you some more. And the signs that come from everywhere, the winds, the telephone calls, the letters, the announcements, the invitations, um, the near-death experiences, whatever small or large those signs may be for you, I pray for them to show you the miracle of our creator's power and work in your life and in the work for this beautiful, beautiful summit. I, I even love saying it. Bioregional Regeneration Summit Community. I'm gonna write you a song with those lyrics. It's going to be fun. Where we can stretch like our sister helped us uh, see the need for us to stretch ourselves, Uhuru, mahalo sister. So as we are blessed with miracles, I pray for miracles to happen in your life and not to rekindle what you have begun here, but to grow with the glow, grow with the glow and don't let it go out to where it has to be rekindled. Don't let it go out. Search for your, for your, your path, your meaning, your, the way that you can serve, the way that you can help. And it's all going to come to you. It's just going to boop, 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 very easily. Just the right ones for you because we're all different. And we all have different gifts and we all have different uh, uh, contributions to our people, to our families, to our communities to our lands, to our world. We all have different gifts. So just the right ones are going to plop in your lap and say, okay, here I am. Do me, do me. So may you be blessed with miracles from this moment forward. And see, to be aware, to look, look for the signs, look for the whole Ilona. Receive them, acknowledge them. Bless each and every one of you individually and unite together in taking clear action that advances the care of our sacred lands, our sacred waters, the species of every kind, including humanity as a whole. So this is my prayer for you, brothers and sisters. Let your hearts be open and expanded to receive what is already coming. No need to hold back. All you have to do is surrender and open up and say, okay, I'm ready. So mahalo to you all. Incredible human beings. My dear global family. In Hawaii, we say, imua aloha. Go forward. Imua, go forward with love. Forgiveness, blame, resentment, all of those other lower, lower qualities, leave them behind in a pond of flowers and scents that go up to the heavens. Send them up. Send them up. All that pain, 
blah, 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 blah. They don't even want to say the words. Put it in a beautiful pond of lilies and koi fish and burn the incense on the side and let it go up to creator so that we can continue imua aloha. Ahui ho, ahui ho to all of you, which means until we meet again. Malamapono is another ending to every conversation and meeting. Malamapono. Malama means to take care of. The Hawaiians always say malama aina, take care of the land. What's the second part, Ipo? Malama, malama aina, ame, aina, malama. Malama aina, malama ikikahi, ikikahi. Malama aina, malama ikikahi. I have a I have a scholar and a teacher here in Hawaiian studies. We're having a meeting now. So that means Malama Aina, which means take care of the land. And a, a, a proverb, a very proper proverb in Hawaii is in the land will take care of you. Malama Pono. Pono is a small word that hundreds of volumes of thick books are written on the meaning of this tiny word, simply translated. Pono is universal balance and harmony and righteousness when doing good. So in to say farewell to our family, we say malama pono. Take care of that pono, the balance, the harmony. And then we always end with aloha, as in our beginning greeting, like this summit opened up here in November, October 24th. And right now, today on November 4th, we are sealing that summit with this pule and this time together so that all of the language and the intelligence and the superior goals for our family on this Honua, on this planet is protected sealed in golden light and prayer so that any disturbances cannot get inside and we contain the aloha that has been learned over these past couple of weeks. We contain it so that we can grow it within ourselves so that we can build that light in our hearts and our minds and our souls and our bodies and we can burst it out dynamically together into the universe so that not only a few people here, there, a few people here, there, a few people here, there. No, for the entire planet and population to hear the kahea, the sound of the horn that is going out from the summit. So we can hope. Mm -hmm. How fun is that, yeah? That we can do that together. Very powerful, very powerful stuff. So, my beloved brand new family of brothers and sisters, mahalo for allowing me to share our aloha from Hawaii with you. And this is the secret to all success in life. Aloha, love, love. Leave everything else off the plate. Nothing is more important than aloha, love. So with love, I say ahui ho until we meet again to a wonderful closing. And then again, mahalo. Mahalo kiko. Mahalo to the creator for all there is. Bye. Bye. Aloha. Aloha, Manulele. Aloha. Aloha a todos y a todas. A todos. Yeah.